Next subject we're going to cover is image props. Uh, you may have noticed in both the first file we were doing a demo in and in this file, the trees were an image prop and the fire in this was an image prop. So we'll click on the Save View menu and we'll click for image props, which will focus in on this fire here. Now it's a bit dark because we don't have any light turned on and the image prop isn't emitting any light. So in the visualization palette, expand this and just turn on light too there, that directional light we added. That's much better. There, now the image prop we have here, image props are based on a texture. So what it is, is basically just an image that's been made into a texture with an area of the image prop cut out and made transparent so that we can see through it no matter what direction we look at it in. This one in particular has been configured with a glow so that it'll glow red in RenderWorks mode. You can see that very easily if you just go to Fast RenderWorks under the RenderWorks menu very briefly. See that orange glow that's coming through there? Now, in the daytime, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So we can go ahead and we'd replace this image prop with a different one that's just an extinguished campfire. That way we'll have a nighttime and a daytime image prop. So if we want to render this at night, we could leave this on. We'll go back to OpenGL in the RenderWorks menu. And first we'll simply delete this render this image prop. Now we want to make a new one and we'll just do that from scratch. We'll go to Model, Create Image Prop. We'll choose to import an image file and click OK. And you're going to choose the Campfire Unlit image that came with this training chapter. We can leave it named Campfire Unlit. But the most important part of an image prop is its mask. So we'll want to click Use Mask and we'll click Create Mask. We could import another image file if it was going to be a complex shape we wanted to cut out of it or cut out a shape that isn't in the image. But since the background color is all solid white, we can just remove that. We'll click Reuse an image from another resource and this prop's color. Click OK. We want to choose transparent color and click OK. And in here, we can choose the color we want to make transparent. Right now it's set to black, which is not correct. If we click here, the white part will become transparent and this will all be solidly drawn. So we'll click OK and we'll click OK again. And now it's placed in the document. We have it selected here, but it's not in our current view. So we can just go to View, Zoom, and Fit to Objects to find it. There it is. And that's far too large. We can reduce the size. We can just change the height here as it'll keep the same aspect ratio with this checked. Let's make this 0.3 meters. Take this image prop from the bottom and we'll just drop it over here in the middle of the fireplace. If you lose the view, you can go back to the image prop save view in order to get right back where we were. Move that up, grab the bottom, and we'll place that right here in the middle. And the height we can just make zero. That'll line it up with the ground, and we won't see it if we duck down. It'll stay within the fire pit there. Image props can be used for simple things like this, or they can be used to create trees, plants, anything that generally you don't want to model the entire object. It's also very efficient. If I were to model all these logs individually and pile them here, it would look a little more realistic, and sometimes that's what you want. But it would significantly increase both the complexity of the file, how long it takes to render, and the size of the file if you keep adding geometry like that. Image props are really just a way to quickly save you time by just using textures in a clever manner.